another day, another YouTube channel. I'm an ex-employed scientist wanting to be one again and I figure uh, one way to accomplish this is to put myself out there by sharing my knowledge both in science and also in my career search. In my short introductory video I stated that there would be other ones so this video is my longer video. Hi there, welcome to my channel where I chat about my science job hunt, deliver presentations and improve my communication skills. If you are a subscriber, you're a pretty new one and welcome back. Today I'll talk about why I created a channel and what's in it for you. Why a video channel? Well, in my current role there is little to no opportunity to develop or deliver training. And I figure by having a YouTube channel I'll be motivated to develop new training and also improve on my presentation delivery skills. Uh, the plan is to present on such topics as say autoclave validation and microbiology for non-microbiologists uh, using quality assurance principles in day-to-day -day troubleshooting, things like that. Um, I find that when I talk I tend to do so quickly. I do not enunciate all that well and assume people know what I am on about. By setting up a channel I am forcing myself to develop plans and content and present it in a sensible way to the masses. So pretty much tailoring these videos for you who may not be a scientist with loads of microbiology experience. You might just be a job seeker who's interested in getting involved in science. So hopefully these videos will be of interest. This process should improve my presentation skills and I can also work on and refine how I communicate information. By communicating what I know, I should improve how well I interview, which historically I think has been pretty woeful. It may not have been, but that's how I perceive it. Uh, the one time I felt I was a gun at interviewing was when I had about five in three weeks. Uh, a bit like dating, you might be rusty at the start, but you do enough of it. By the end, or by a short period of time, you got rid of the rust and the cobwebs are gone and you're getting to be familiar with it so you're more comfortable. So if you're comfortable in an interview, uh, you can, I guess, be more yourself, you're less likely to sit there going, hmm, I don't know, what's a good answer for that? Uh, being comfortable with yourself and your presentation skills and also rehearsing helps you in an interview which hopefully means that you come across as the, or you don't come across as you can communicate why you are the best person for that role. As to what is in it for you, if you are looking for a career in science or just job hunting, you'll get a point of view from someone who's actually looking for work, not for someone who's holding the keys to entry. Uh, from what I have found on YouTube, there's a stack of videos from about your master's going, you must do this, you must do that, and blah 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 so I figured I'd put myself out there and give the I guess views and opinions from somebody on the other side as in someone wanting to get a job uh, as stated for those in the science industry or just interested now and then I'll produce longer videos detailing key concepts and new training that I develop along the way fun stuff like that Assuming that anyone is engaged enough to leave a comment, uh, perhaps saying, hey, can you talk about blah -de blah then I could take that on board, develop a presentation for blah -de blah and then go, hey, today's video will be blah -de blah uh, The format of this channel is probably going to be more blog style, uh, not with saying things like presentations. Uh, as it is early days yet, things may and probably will change. Uh, scripting my videos will hopefully minimise wandering off topic and waffling. Uh, I, I do think that scripting and trying to read scripts word for word doesn't work out too well. Uh, can come across as stunted, whereas the ad-libbing stuff is good in some senses, but then you can start to waffle or not come out with anything that makes much sense. So I'll try to get a little balance between scripted and non-scripted. 
So anyway, we'll see how that works out. Goals wise, at least a video every one to two weeks, maybe 10 to 100 subscribers. Not expecting the channel to take off. Uh, if it does, well, yippee. Uh, maybe a 10% like rate. Uh, so far, I've got about 25 to 30 video ideas, so there's plenty of content for, say, half a year. Uh, assuming I don't put them out more frequently. Uh, what actually happens if I do get a job out of all this? Well, I'll probably keep this channel going because I do think it's a good way to brush up on my presentation skills and how I deliver information, uh, hopefully in the uh, plain language way of presenting stuff. So you don't all scratch your head and go, what's all that gobbledygook? Why science and career? Well, I love science. I know my regulations. I've been a microbiologist for uh, 15 years. Uh, eight of those were actually leading teams. Uh, a good 10 was writing documents and conducting investigations. So I'm skilled with the controlled and the uh, managed documentation side of things and I have the actual industry knowledge, which apparently that's uh, rare. Uh, so maybe I should leverage that into my job hunting. Say, hey, give me the job. Although I have noticed that for most tech writer roles, they're like three to six month contracts, which is pretty crap if you ask me. You employ somebody long term, let them do the initial job and keep them on to make sure your documentation stays up to scratch. As well as conflicting cover letter advice, there's also conflicting information on how you should target your job search, as in apply for everything under the sun, apply for everything you think you might be able to do, or work on this really fine niche. Uh, in my experience, whatever you think you can do and whatever you're capable of doing, apply for that. Uh, if you get a job, you can always expand your role or develop within it. So it doesn't matter if you're doing, say, uh, an exclusive bench work role, there's definitely scope to develop and get into report writing, investigation, validation and all the more complex and involved things. Also other conflicting advice, networking versus not networking. Also I'll do a piece on recruiters, uh, I find them to be useless. So I'll talk about that. Um, following my redundancy in 2012, yes a long time ago, I waited three months before I started looking for work. Why not? I uh, got myself a call centre role, which I think shot myself in the foot because I've stayed there despite applying for plenty of jobs and having plenty of interviews. So what's the deal with that? Uh, for me, I make sure I use my documentation, communication and critical thinking skills in my role. Uh, for example, uh, we've got stacks of help pages and the procedures and there's email correspondence with customers on how to fix problems. But I tend towards giving them imperative instructions because it's do this, do this, do this, do this, that should result in this. And that's the way I like to write documents. So it's not open to interpretation. Although you do have to assume there's some knowledge on how to use a computer. These days, maybe it's a case of people look at me and go, you've been a call centre for five years and why didn't you get into a science job straight away? Are you crap? Well, no, I'm not crap. Uh, and hopefully these videos explain that or demonstrate it. Uh, perhaps the roles I applied for in the early days weren't aligned enough to my background or the fact that the role I had became redundant and that was seen as a negative, as in, he became redundant, whereas no, the role became redundant. I heard through a peer that one recruiter decided I was too quiet and struck me off their roster. Uh, it was probably the one that stated that my transferable skills weren't a match for the role, and she'd interviewed a team member of mine a while back, who apparently said they were my team leader, uh, which was clearly wrong. And maybe because I didn't correct them in their errors, they decided I was too quiet, or... Um, wasn't willing to make a fuss or whatever, uh, rather than being, I guess, respectful in an interview, which is how I thought you were supposed to act, as opposed to rah 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 So yes, I held my tongue as uh, that wasn't relevant to the conversation we were having about me and my career prospects. If the majority of recruiters play games like that, well, no wonder I have a dim view of them. 
If you have made it this far, I would like you to join me on my career and professional development journey. Please share, like or subscribe. If you are a potential Australian employer, I encourage you to contact me. Got something to add or a video suggestion? Whack it down in the comment section. In my next video, I will be discussing my two year plan. Until next time, this has been Paul Yatman, Bachelor of Science. And also Diploma of Visual Communication. Science Career Hunter. Kapla!